Well, Dalal Street started the June series on a positive note, but uh, by the end of the day, uh, of course, the market had a great mood on Friday. But by the end of the day, the Nifty also reversed last week's losses to end over 1% in the green. On this week's edition of the Editor's Roundtable, are the markets poised to hit all-time highs soon? We take stock of why people prefer online gaming accounts to DMAT ones and a deep dive into the performance of new age companies as well. I'm Sonia Shanoi and today with me we have the editors. Uh, there's Prashant, there's Nigel, Mangalam. Folks, uh, finally the Bulls got that energy and came back with a bang. Well, indeed, uh, you know, it was a very, very good close to the week. We were wondering whether or not we'll see 8,400, 8,458 that we'll be 18, talking. 18,000. 18,458 <laughs> 18, and suddenly 18,500. Actually, I've, I've been so used to saying this 18,458, I mean, I got, got caught on the wrong it's side. Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. By the way, let me, let me lay the ground rules first, right? Like last week. Week, Mangalam is a surprise for us again. No, I don't, unfortunately. He's not. suddenly now become a, a routine, not surprising. I, I didn't have lunch, Mangalam. I thought you were going to, I mean, pizzas, burgers, I thought there's something else. Uh, there's new age companies, and they're delivering profits, no growth. So this time now, no growth. <laughs> Any makeup that you've got for me because you're tracking new age companies like Nike? I wish I could get makeup for you. Be good enough to understand makeup for women. <laughs> Sonia, <laughs> Sonia's hinted. Are you getting it? No. no, no, no. no? 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 What about you? Any, any any Dream Eleven accounts? <laughs> we'll work on that. What, what do they the say? Bulls, you know? The Bulls are wearing a lot of makeup, right? Bulls because are wearing a lot of makeup. They're doing pretty well, pretty well these days. All right. Uh, okay, I've been told the Sonal is listening. Sonal huh? is Sonal's right? listening. Sonal's listening. Yeah. So I'll, I'll learn about good, some good makeup from her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, Sonia, Bulls did come back, right? Yeah. And how? Because uh, for the second time in just five sessions, the Nifty, and this is a point that we made, uh, you know, in the morning on Friday, and of course, last Friday as well, uh, the Nifty tested the 20-day moving average, which is an important support, and then it rallied sharply. I mean, actually, Friday, this week's Friday was almost a repeat of what we saw last Friday. Uh, very clean, trending moves through the course of the day, the market making higher highs. And we, you know, uh, closed at with just one point short of the 18,500 level. Bank Nifty w ended up about three quarters of a percent higher. That's about 150 points away uh, from an all-time high as well. And just looks like it that this is the time that this is the push, the final push, which will take us to a new, uh, new high. Last time the Bank Nifty fell short by 10 pesos, uh, and then you know you had a bit of a sideways congestion kind of a move. But maybe this is it. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, uh, it's, uh, the broader markets are also supportive. I mean, the breadth of the move is quite impressive. Mid-caps rallying on large volumes every day, irrespective of whether the Nifty does something, the Bank Nifty. But broader markets, I think that momentum has been very intact. And globally as well, uh, you know, now this is, of course, a deal will be done when it is done. I'm talking about the U.S. debt thing. Uh, but the fact is that headlines are indicating that both sides in the U.S. are Republicans and Democrats want this to be done. They want to sort of kick the can down the road and look at this after the elections in the U.S. So, uh, will we get something over the weekend? Time will tell. Uh, but I think uh, there is optimism building there as well. If that were to happen, as many uh, who come on the program have, have told us, near term expect a bit of a risk on rally uh, globally, which may be the trigger we need to just kind of, you know, at least hit, touch the all-time high, and then we'll see what we want to do. You know, there's a, there's a phrase we use, right? Are the animal spirits back? <laughs> I don't know if they're back, but, <laughs> but perhaps Anshul Segal, uh, who's joining us now, can uh, give us the answer to that. Uh, he's the Executive Vice President at Kotak PMS. Anshul, thanks a lot for joining in. So that's a big question, right? Are the animal spirits back in the market and does it have enough ammunition to go well past this 18,400 level? Um, hi, Sonia. Thanks for having me. I don't know about animal spirits, but uh, gold spirits are definitely down. The reason is that uh, there was a, you know, a slaughter on earnings over last year. You saw most companies uh, see price, uh, uh, you know, earnings expectations decline, and that was getting impact. Uh, that was kind of playing out in uh, in stock prices as well, as we saw the Nifty small cap index go down 13 percent last year. That uh, seems to have abated. Earnings uh, expectations are holding up. The fourth quarter results so far have been strong. And if this trend continues, liquidity comes in, uh, then the party obviously continues. And um, clearly, that will be the harbinger of uh, animal spirits. Uh, that's what everyone is hoping for, as also us. 
but you know, uh, we, we'll talk about all the animals, uh, the different kinds of animals that you're talking about, also <laughs> goats, etc. In uh, just a bit, what's actually rising apart from the animal spirits are the number of players on all these fantasy gaming apps, Nigel? Well, uh, you know, we were all celebrating the number of DMAT accounts, right? So I said, let's put in some data and let's talk about uh, the Dream 11 itself. So, you know, just focusing on a couple of uh, data points, in August 2022, we were celebrating that we have 10 crore DMAT accounts. Now, that number has moved up to around 11.4 crore as per the last number that I checked. And that growth has been quite steady, right? We are quite happy about that. Three and a half crore moves to around 11.4 crore. Rod. But I'll tell you what, we're in third place. You know, in terms of DMAT accounts, if you compare it with crypto users and you compare it with Dream 11 users. Just pull the next chart up for you on the screen. Dream 11 users, by the way, are at around 16 crore rod. Now, that's, these are the updated numbers uh, that I've got. And in fact, uh, you know, my buddy on Twitter, Aditya Kondavar, he pointed some of this data out. But this is the updated data that I put up for you on the screen. And, uh, you know, if you're looking at the number of DMAT accounts and you compare it with the Dream 11 as well, both of them are up by three times if you compare it by, from 2019. But Dream 11 has come on a bigger base. They were closer around 5 crore rod. That's at around 16 crore as we speak. And just take a look at the surge in the Dream 11 accounts. You know, they were just around, what, 3 lakh odd. So they're up 530 times, you know, in the last eight years or so, from around 3 lakh all the way to around 16 crore rod. What could be the probable reasons? You know, why is there uh, such a big surge in terms of users on Dream 11? Well, uh, I did a, a bit of a check, uh, you know, with friends and uh, also I just said, let's put on a few points. We have the Insta Reels, right? Instant gratification is something that people look forward to. You get the result on that day itself when you play these fantasy games. When you invest in the stock market, it could take longer durations of time. So maybe instant gratification for the Instagram Reel generation. Also, there's a greater fun quotient out here, right? Games are obviously more fun than numbers, than financials, than profit and loss accounts as, as well. Simple uh, reason could be everyone wants to get rich quickly, but that's debatable, actually. Gamification is something that people have been focusing on, uh, you know, and that has immense potentially, both global, globally as well as in India out here. When you're looking at equity markets, hardcore research is what you're looking for. Now, one factor that could play out here is out of the 16 crore users, all of them may not be unique, you know, as we point out with even uh, DMAT account holders, and maybe all of them are, are not wagers. There could be a large proportion of that that are non-wagers, which essentially means you're playing, but money is not involved out there. You know, just forming your own group, you're uh, uh, forming a group which only your group can play, you're not interacting with the other. So that could be another factor out there. And they are known as non-wagers when money is not involved. And smoother account opening procedures. You can open your account with an email ID, I understand. While when you open a DMAT account, obviously, there are KYC norms as well. So short point is, Yes, number of uh, DMAT accounts have crossed more than 10, 11 crore accounts. But guess what? Dream 11 has grown at a faster clip as well. Guys, back to you. I mean, Nigel, I can tell you that uh, it's, it's exploding. The market is exploding. My, I'll give you an example. My daughter, uh, who's now almost a teenager, her class group her, in school, the class group, they play the Dream 11 as a tournament. I mean, they don't play each match. Mm. They play not for money, so it's non-wages, as Nigel pointed yeah. out. But it is so intense. I mean, the kind of commentary and the kind of analysis which and happens. And the competition. I can tell you, we don't do that kind of analysis for <laughs> stock markets. With the, you know, transfers and, you know, boosters, transfers, this, that, whatnot. Is, I mean, uh, it's, it's exploding. You know, space. gamification is working. I, I was speaking to a bunch of consumer companies who track where, you know, the next real estate would be for them to deploy their ad dollars. Mm. They said everyone speaks about artificial intelligence. Everyone speaking about how, you know, your cell phone has become the biggest real estate. But now people are moving way beyond that. It's the video games where a lot of ad dollars are spent because the communities that are built on video games and through these uh, gaming apps and gamification are so much more intense. They are, you know, like you said, everyone discussing and th th there's a lot more. So if someone sees a brand on a game, they're more likely to buy it than they would see it maybe, you know, walking down the road on a hoarding or something. At least more likely to absorb it or, uh, you know, consume it, right? As when, you, when you're watching yeah. a game. Got that. Anshul, uh, I wanted to come back to you on this. I mean, this entire <coughs> space has really blown up. And of course, in the listed space, there are names like Nazara Tech, etc. But uh, how are you feeling about the advent of, you know, gaming and uh, even online shopping for that matter, the whole digital experience? Uh, and from a stock market angle, how do you capitalize on this? 
Um, Sonia, this is uh, this is a very interesting space. Um, it's not, you know uh, there is a recent paper which has come out from the regulator where they've uh, uh, differentiated gaming uh, in two in two ways. Uh, one is game of skill, the other is a game of chance. And uh, uh, and you know this is a regulatory paper where where they've tried to uh, kind of consolidate the industry and give it some structure. Um, game of skill, um, in which you have a lot of, um, uh, you know, games like um, poker and um, um, rummy and uh, some of the other games. And then, of course, uh, games that you are talking of, um, all, of those, uh, all of those all of those are very interesting. And that space, because of, uh, because of uh, some standardization from the regulator, is likely to explode. Also, as Prashant was mentioning, there is a lot of interest from uh, the new generation. There is interest from even people of our generation. Um, this space is ripe for a, a complete blowout. Um, there is, uh, of course, a ease of playing because of um, uh, you know the internet and all of that. Um, I think that uh, this is a space which is uh, likely to blow out uh, significantly. New companies are going to get listed. Some are already listed, one of which you mentioned. And um, and the same is going to be the case with online purchases, etc. Um, even there, um, you know, Indian per capita income is just two thousand three hundred dollars, and that goes to four thousand over a period of time. Uh, okay. These people are going to spend online. So uh, really, this is all going to take off. Prashant, you have both the accounts, DMAT as well as Dream Eleven. <coughs> Uh, I don't have Dream11. <laughs> Actually, I have a Dream11 account, but uh, you know, it's almost traditional. It's become a joke that uh, I, I'm always at the bottom 30th number because I don't, I don't play, but I'm there. I mean, I'm, I'm there for the entertainment, and it is entertaining, Nigel, to kind of see what happens. I don't happens. know which one is more inactive, my Dream11 account or the Dream11 account. They've been both dormant, and Nigel spoke about you know, wagers and non-wagers and all of that and stuff. I think mine is a sleeper. <laughs> that, that doesn't do anything. And there was some data that came in from uh, on the gaming industry itself, which said that there are 45 crore gamers in the country, mm. of which only 20% play with money and uh, the rest are, are non majors. And are how you... many online shoppers? Much less, right? Online shoppers, there are 650 million, but the active online shoppers are only 45 million. Active is basically buy, the, the ones who buy once in six months. So obviously, those who buy a lot more are uh, 45 gamers. crore gamers. Gamers, yes. I mean, the you know CMI estimates that the total workforce in India is 50 crores. But you have <laughs> over six. <laughs> but I, I don't know how they define gamers, right? I mean, uh, anyone who's got an account on a gaming app or a gaming that would be big. I mean, that's that a big proper, number. But then again, you, you know, know, it's not mutually exclusive. One person can have three gaming, three gaming accounts, accounts as well. Yeah. So we don't know, right? So, yeah. Yeah. but but uh, Mangalam, if you're, you're focused... gaming all day, perhaps you're not working then. So <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> they're it's, they're not, it's a mutually, mutually exclusive, exclusive yeah. to workforce. And, <laughs> But you're focusing on new age companies, right? Yes, Malab? since everyone's talking about games and all, I, I just use one of those taglines. Ab ye karlo, ab Dream 11 pe team bana lo, jab tak main ye karke aata ho. <laughs> That's what they say, right? But you know, it's, it's uh, the new age companies that I'm talking about. Everyone talks about growth and profitability. So I just thought that, you know, this time around we'll look at some of the numbers. So all the new age companies that reported numbers uh, in FY23, they you know, are looking at profitability at the cost of growth. Earlier when the cycle was up, everyone was looking at growth at the cost of profitability. And data suggests that as well. I was just looking at three companies. You know, we have Nika, you have Delivery, as well as you have Zomato. Between FY18 to FY22, the revenues grew at a compounded growth of 73% for Zomato, 60% for Nika, and 55% for Delivery. FY23, uh, it came off a little bit. For Zomato, yes, it was aided by a bunch of acquisitions as well. But Nika, from 60%, it came down to 36%. Delivery came down to 13% itself. But what actually did better was their operational performance. Now, between 2018 to 2022, if you look at it, you know, most of these companies have had big losses or the losses have not, uh, you know, uh, uh, improved much. Whereas in uh, Nika's case, we saw the EBITDA actually double. So that's basically Nika's numbers. This is delivery. Uh, delivery's losses have reduced as well. And Zomato from 2022 to 2023 itself, has uh, you know seen a loss reduction of almost 600 crores. If you look at it on a quarterly basis, the margins have almost uh, you know 
improved by twofold. For Zomato, at the first quarter, it was minus 22%. It's become minus 11% now. For Nika, minus 12.5% has become 0.3%. That's actually delivery. And for delivery, it's uh, improved uh, as well. So if you just take a look at what these companies are doing. One, they're strengthening their core. So for Zomato, they've strengthened their core, which is the food delivery business. The EBITDA for the food delivery business has only gone higher. 78 crores versus a loss of 189 crores at the same time uh, last quarter. If you look at uh, some other things that these companies are doing, one, they're cutting costs. So if you look at delivery, their freight costs as a percentage of sales have been reducing and their other expenses. And finally, if you look at uh, reducing adventurism, that's what these companies are doing. Zomato has said that they will not consider further acquisitions. In fact, they've stopped operations in 225 non-profitable cities as well. Delivery has completed the spot-on integration and Nika said that offline expansion that they do will only be gradual and profitable. For these companies, there is some safety available in terms of cash on their books as well. So Zomato has 11,000 crore cash on their books, which is 20% of its market cap. Delivery has 21% of its market cap as cash on their books. This is funds that are, that are uh, you know, freshly raised from the IPO. Nika has 1% of its cash on the books, but then again, it's a different model. So it has about 1,000 crores of inventory itself. Now, after these, uh, uh, you know, growth parameters, they are now looking at profitability, which attracts higher flows. Earlier, growth attracted higher multiples. So what valuations are we looking at? From the peak, these stocks have corrected anywhere between 50 to 60% from the highs. And now they're trading anywhere between two, four, and six times FY25 price to earnings. What are we looking at? Increased operational performance. We're looking at correction in valuations. We're looking at tighter funding for competitors. So these guys are going to do well. And global interest rates are near peak. So there could again be some fancy for all these new age companies. So it's basically the new age companies who are now looking at profitability at the cost of growth. And the street is respecting them, respecting them for that. Yeah, Mangalam, thanks very much uh, for that. So. Uh, things are turning around, they're looking like, uh, I mean, you know, coming into their own, maturing, talking about not revenues but profits. Uh, let's put that to uh, Anshul. Uh, Anshul, you heard Mangalam uh, talk about these new age companies, three in particular, Nika, Delivery, Zomato. Uh, do you own any of them in your portfolio? And uh, are you thinking about, uh, or if you don't, are you thinking about owning them? Thankfully, Prashant, I had just the app, uh, not the stock. <laughs> Um, and that's that's helping me because I've uh, saved money on delivery. I've got good food, and I've lost more not lost money on the stock. Um, but now, of course, after after the stocks have corrected so much, um, you know, any uh, seasoned investor will tell you when uh, so much uh, blood is on the street, that's the time to be interested in uh, in names like this and others. Um, these companies. Clearly, they've uh, realized that easy money uh, is available only to a point. And uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to brass tax, uh, they've really got to get profitability in to grow their business. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what they're doing. They're cutting down on uh, spending money to gain customers um, and in the process, uh, enhancing profitability. Uh, this may not be a bad time to actually consider them, not really to buy them. I, I'm not making any recommendation, just saying that Analyzing these companies uh, at this time may not be a bad bet. Okay, analyzing these companies at this time may not be a bad bet. But you know, to be honest, I mean, as someone who has shopped on Nika and mm. has bought a lot of their products, there's so much available now, uh, now outside. I mean, I recently went to the Tira store in the mm -hmm. Geo Mall. It was fabulous and discounts galore over there. Then there's Tata Click, there's Purple, there is uh, Geo. I mean, there's so much out there. So I, I guess competition exists and let's see if they can wade through it. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, posed the same question to Falguni Nair uh, after the Nika earnings and she said that the market itself is so large and when they were, you know, starting out, they also had Amazon which was looking yeah. at the beauty business. Mm -hmm. So everyone said that, how will you Amazon proof your business? They said they continue to focus on growth in their business itself and they have enough SKUs, they have enough growth areas and on the point of, you know, other competitors coming in as well, they are scaling up now. These guys already have an established ecosystem. So let's see whether that comes about or not. As customers, we are only happy that we have multiple platforms to choose from. Options, Investors' yeah. problems, <laughs> they love to look at it. And of course, they have the first mover advantage that always works. But let's do one thing. Let's slip into a quick uh, commercial break. On the other side, we'll continue our discussion on the market and the key trends that we can see in the weeks to come with Anshul Segal. Stay with us.